we've set up a six by or four by six on the uh, on the chop saw with a just a small piece of wood just hanging over the edge just a little bit if you can see that where the so that the uh, piece of wood slides up and has a stop so it sits there now let's come up above and check it out from up above and we can see that we've clamped it in in a couple different ways just to kind of keep everything square we've cut uh, a series of uh, pieces of wood uh, to a uh, milled size and now we've set up our chop saw and we're going to drop our piece of wood in there and if you'll notice that the blade comes down just at a bit of an angle and it's going to take out that bottom edge <clears throat> right there and you'll you'll see after a while why we're doing this uh, mainly this is the bench pin part so let's go ahead and cut one gonna make a bit of noise uh, by the way this is definitely not OSHA approved uh, I'm sitting here with two little fingers fairly close to the blade but still uh, well protected and as long as, I'm, as long as I'm paying attention Get ourselves a nice fairly clean end cut there and we end up with some wedges Oh, well, we got a half a dozen more to cut. Now, we'll in order back. to get to the next step, uh, we need to drill a hole in the wood at a certain degree angle, and I can't remember what that degree angle is. And we have our original piece here, so we know what the angle is. All we need to do is bring the head of the uh, the mill over, so that uh, it will match up with the angle. That we already have in that one piece of wood. So basically, we just kind of drop this head over until we get. Bring our tower over to this and set that up <clears throat> and we can already see it needs to drop way over so that's uh, we'll just keep going until we get something to line up even more drop that up on top of here and we already see that we're still not enough Even more. We are getting close though. I don't know, that looks pretty good. It might have gone over just a bit too far. Let's bring it back just a half a degree. Oops. The other way. That looks pretty good. Alright, we'll tighten everything up. 
and we'll call it good right there. Now let's run it down through that hole and see what we've got. I mean, to me, that looks pretty good. We've got our uh, a wood bit in there. We've got the thing centered this way and this way. And now, basically, all we have to do is just drill a hole. Now, as we get to the bottom, uh, we have to be real careful not to punch through and break the wood. But it's just a matter of going through real slow. And it kind of punched through a little bit, but we've got uh, we've got a lot of room back here to play with. So And that one punched through real nice. Okay, we're going to take a break and uh, do the other oh, five or six that we have to do. And uh, then we'll be back. We're using a two-fluted bit here with carbide tips on this wood. And uh, actually, this bit has gotten a little bit worn just by... Uh, but it's still good and sharp. And uh, we're going to drop down into here and bore a hole in this piece of wood. And it turns out this bit does a very good job of that. And in order to do that evenly and smoothly, I'm going to back you up here a little bit. We're going to use the power feed on the bridge port. Let's get this started. And uh, take it down till it just begins to hit. And I like to uh, use... Uh, my vacuum. So we're going to make a little noise here. Kick it into gear. And two things the vacuum will do. You can hear when I don't have the vacuum on, in, in place that the wood kind of chatters a bit. And with the vacuum, the wood kind of settles down and doesn't chatter. go it's such a no-brainer for uh, the bridge port with wood but it makes a nice nice clean hole just a little bit of sandy and that thing will be in perfect shape so we've got uh, about 26 of these to do. And actually, I've, I've already done about 20 of them. So we've got six more to do or so. Um, slide it in. Drop it up against my stop. Tighten it up. Start the thing up again. Drag it down to where it starts to touch. Whoops. And we just dropped a drip of oil on, on the wood. Not good. Kick it into gear. Okay, that's it.
except I dripped another drip of oil on that. This bridge board has a tendency to do that. Luckily, this is on the bottom of the platform, so it will never be seen. Okay, so uh, now we, all we got to do is clean up and uh, move on to the next part. This next part is pretty simple now that I got it all worked out. Uh, it took a while to get it uh, figured out, though. Uh, basically, what I did is I took a, uh, one of the washers, as you can see, and I attached a couple of pieces of angle iron to it that would go on the uh, up against this part and up against this part of the uh, of the piece of wood. And then, simple process, hold that up against the wood and uh, drill out my three holes. Done deal. So uh, we got uh, 20, 20 or 30 more of these to do and uh, we'll be back. Next stage in this whole mess is, uh, is uh, uh, countersinking the screw holes. And that's once it's set up, that's a pretty easy deal. And you can see that uh, the screw will just drop right in there into a nice little pocket and it be flush. All right, and we're gonna do, uh, oh, I don't know, probably another 30 of these. Okay, last one, and we will say sayonara to this uh, drilling process. We got the chops uh, set at 45 degrees. I put a, just the slightest bit of a mark right there. And we're gonna come in and take our uh, wooden platforms, ride that right up against the, the line. And turn it over. taking that back edge off. Temporary jig on the table saw and I've already cut one side of the piece of wood and now we're going to set it up, flip it over and we reset the, uh, the line of the jig and now it'll cut the other side. <clears throat> so then we get this nice long paper. Cut another 20 or so of those and uh, we'll be back. Next thing we got to do is cut this little V right in the tip of the uh, of the piece. You can kind of see that the taper and the V all match. So uh, we basically we've laid out a real simple jig. This goes up into that corner and then we drill a hole in the in the piece itself. Pretty, uh, pretty straightforward. Just a simple bottom-out hole. And uh, what that does is gives us the the beginnings of the V. Of course, I put it in the wrong side, but I did want to do some that are on the uh, some that are on the left-hand side for the lefties. Um, so. Uh, but at the, this point, probably we're going to want to come in like this and put it in the right-hand side. 
Okay, so we got uh, 20 some odd more to do with this and uh, we'll come back. Next part's pretty easy. Uh, on the bandsaw, uh, we've cut, uh, or we've just described a couple of lines. And at some point or another, I'm going to go ahead and figure out a, uh, a nice little V cutter or something like that. But for right now, we're just going to cut them by hand and uh, turn the saw on. And um, we got ourselves a nice little V in there and ready to go. Okay. Next step is taking the, uh, the piece of wood and uh, go ahead and put it on the sander. Making it uh, and making it smooth so that it's smooth to the touch. And actually, this is probably the best piece out of the whole group because it's got this nice little knot. In the Basically, I buy this uh, wing nut set or wing bolt set from uh, off of eBay, uh, and the, the bolts are actually too long. Here's a bolt here, so they need to be cut down. And uh, if, if you'll see on this side, there's a shoulder that it cuts down to and then threaded so but that's not too difficult and uh, again I've already done that on this one piece here you can see the threaded bolt it's a little bit shorter this is how long it would have been had it been uh, not cut down so that's gonna stick out just a little bit too far so then you know just put it on the lathe take it down a little bit and put a and thread it and then uh, attach the uh, the the wooden uh, plate or the pin to the uh, shaft, and of course using uh, some uh, um, flathead bolts, or Allen bolts for that, and it has a nice finish to it. And then uh, putting uh, putting together the installation bolts and the um, the the bench pin itself and there's uh, you can kind of see see the pin and uh, we'll be back an important part of this process when you're when you're uh, uh, mounting your pin on your bench is to rotate your and I'm going to bring it right in straight on so you can see it is to rotate, uh, well, unscrew it a little bit. And sometimes you think, oh, well, I'll just, I'll just line up the bolts, the bolt holes, and set those up, and then the pin will slip right in there. But the reality of it is, is that the, the geometry changes just slightly. And you can see, as I rotate the, uh, the base, uh, the the, ge or the uh, geometry of the uh, plate shifts. So what you have to do is you have to kind of find your center where the, where the plate is exactly level to your bench sticking towards you and then, um, and then drill your holes, set your holes and drill them right in that spot. Uh, and, and sometimes it'll be slightly off because, you know, we're talking about a, you know, a tenth of a degree that will change the level of that. So then you just go ahead and take your piece off and, and take a pencil and mark your holes and then drill your holes where they need to be and then mount your piece using the, the bolts and the nuts behind them if, uh, if your bench is your your table is that thick 
If it's thicker, well, you're just going to have to go get some new bolts. But th this is pretty universal bolt. Okay, so that uh, pretty much will get it. I take the piece. I separate the two because it, uh, it won't fit in the box otherwise. And uh, slide the tower into one side of the plastic bag and slide the the uh, the uh, plate into the other side of the plastic bag. Oops, let's go the other direction. And then just roll it and the plastic protects both of them nicely and then tape that up and uh, and we're ready to ship. Oh yeah, and then I put these in a in a smaller plastic bag. We'll get one right here. And put those inside of our package. And we are ready for shipping. Hi, Nick Call, you're here. We're at the tail end of this project, uh, the bench pen project. It's, I think I've been working on this particular part for about a year now. Uh, so it's cool to have it at the end. And uh, we've made uh, 12 or 14 pieces. This is one of them. And uh, you can see that uh, right here is the original bench pen that I made for myself. Oh, I don't know, 20 years ago. And it slides up and down. And uh, I mean, literally, this has been sitting here for 20 years, and it hasn't really shown much of a wear on it. I mean, you know, it hasn't gotten rusty or anything like that. I haven't polished it. I've just been using it. Uh, the pin, uh, my my original pin comes out a little bit further because I wanted it to hang over the edge of the bench so I could. Uh, open my drawer and saw into the drawer and that's uh, that's how that works but uh, you know it doesn't mean that this pin can't sit this the same way uh, just closer to the edge so um, um, that's the end of this project and uh, and we've got many more coming so uh, stay tuned because uh, um, there's always something coming through this shop uh, this is Nick Collier signing out.